I call uh, Lord Young of Cookham. Uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Minister, Lord Wilson. Uh, my Lords, uh, since my noble friend's last question on this matter six weeks ago, uh, I've met with ministerial colleagues and members of the other place. I've considered the legal issues which arise. I've also met with the acting president and vice president of the Court of Protection. While court processes are a matter for the judiciary, I've been assured that child trust funds and the application forms will be on the agenda of the next Rules Committee meeting on the 20th of April. Uh, my Lords, I am grateful to my noble and learned friend for his personal commitment to solving this problem, but he will understand my disappointment at his letter dated March the 23rd, which basically said, no progress has been made since I raised this issue in January. My Lords, Holly Squire requires 24-hour care, and her mother, Tammy, manages £605 a month, which Holly gets from the DWP. If Tammy can be trusted with this money from the taxpayer, why can't she be trusted with Holly's money from her own trust fund without complex and time-consuming court procedures? Uh, my Lords, uh, my noble friend uh, raises a very good point, and I can assure both Tammy Squire and Holly that it is not a question of trust. It is, I'm afraid, a question of law. Uh, the DWP benefits appointee scheme only applies to benefits from the state. It does not ap apply or extend to an individual's own assets. That legal position is governed by the Mental Capacity Act. I have to work within the confines of that act, and that's why I'm working with the judiciary to make the legal route easier, cheaper, and quicker. My Lords, um, May I draw attention to my registered interests as Vice President of MENCAP, who have been working with the MOJ on this issue. Can the Minister please provide the House with an update on what progress the advisory group have made to date? My Lords, the advisory group have, have been meeting uh, not only with uh, 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 organisations in the third sector, such as MENCAP, but also with the financial providers. We've looked at a number of legal and regulatory issues. Uh, we believe that the way through this is actually to work with the Court of Protection. The judges control quite properly the Court of Protection. That is the way through to resolve this long-standing problem. Um, I do not envy my noble friend his position uh, on the front bench at this point, but uh, he has in the past said that the rules need to be appropriate, accessible and proportionate. Given the time it takes to access money that the child might have been waiting for and that parents of disabled children have so much to deal with, could my noble friend take back to the department the idea of adopting the law change that was adopted for families with children with life-threatening conditions to allow access to their own money in these circumstances, as the industry commendably wishes to help them with. My Lord, I'm grateful to my noble friend. Of course, we have looked at legislative options. Uh, amending primary legislation is not likely to be quick or easy. Um, the rules of the Court of Protection, I must emphasise, are a matter for the judiciary and not for the government. And therefore, we have to work with the judiciary, uh, who I know are committed to this issue, and indeed the Court of Protection has work, been working very hard during the pandemic to ensure that its business is kept up to date. Baroness Finlay of Flandreff. My Lords, I declare I chair the National Mental Capacity Forum. The Mental Capacity Act aims to protect against exploitation and support decision making. But COVID lockdown has caused delays in the Court of Protection. How is the backlog of these financial cases being mitigated by digital processes to ensure that the young person's welfare is appropriately safeguarded, particularly if they're in, care, in a care home or have other care arrangements? Um, my Lords, uh, the noble lady is right that fundamentally this is about safeguarding the interests of the young person. So far as the Court of Protection is concerned, staff have come into the Court of Protection throughout the pandemic to make sure that court continues to function. And they are putting in place new digital ways of working to streamline their processes, simplify uh, the uh, process and ensure that there is as uh, little administrative and procedural delay as possible. Uh, 
My Lords, I declare my interest as Vice President of the National Autistic Society. The needs of autistic youngsters differ. Some lack capacity to make financial decisions, or for others their capacity may fluctuate. But the need for parental support is vital. Yet the Mental Capacity Act Code of Practice says family members should only be appointed as welfare deputies in the most difficult cases. This adds to the problem parents of autistic youngsters have in accessing the Child Trust Fund. Mr Justice Hayden in the High Court said the wording of the guidance should be revisited. When is the government going to do this? Uh, my Lords, I'm grateful to the Noble Lord for referring to Mr Justice Hayden, with whom I have met and who I know is personally committed to resolving this issue. Uh, it is fair to say that our understanding now of all sorts of mental capacity is considerably greater than it was in 2005 when the Act was passed and in 1995 when the Law Commission reported on this issue. This is a matter, therefore, which we are looking to address. Uh, Lord Addington. We must thank the noble Lord Young for bringing this to our attention and for his wonderful summary of that letter. My Lords, if we have got a situation where we agree the money is for the children, they have other situations where they are capable of spending money for them. Why haven't the government used the capacity of this chamber and another place to make sure that it happens? Well, but my Lords, the position, I'm afraid, is this. In 1995, when the Law Commission reported on this issue, the Law Commission recommended that there would be a small claims exception to the Mental Capacity Act. Parliament didn't do that. Parliament put in a Mental Capacity Act which has no exceptions at all. That is the legislative background against which I now have to operate. Lord Flight. My Lords, increased legal requirements have made it ever more expensive uh, for, to gain access to children's trust funds. The government justifies the extra costs as providing the necessary protection needed for those lacking the mental capacity to act for themselves. More straightforward and less expensive access paths to child trust funds are needed. Does the Minister agree that a more robust approach is now justified in dealing with Mental Capacity Act? My Lords, the short answer is yes. On fees, what we have done is put in place mechanisms to ensure that anybody who is applying to the Court of Protection only in respect of a child trust fund doesn't have to pay any fees. And I know the Court is looking at the forms to make sure they are suitably accessible so that one can fill in the form and make an application without having to pay a solicitor. My Lords, the last meeting of the investment um, and Savings Alliance was some two months ago when the Minister met that, that group. And as far as I understand, there are no further dates in the diary to meet this group. When will the Minister next meet the uh, Investment and Savings Alliance? My Lords, um, I am looking to arrange meetings with them, but I've been working on the issues which they've raised in any event. In particular, I've looked at whether there is a trust law solution to the problem, but I'm afraid I don't think there is. Uh, the route, I'm afraid, is uh, making sure that people can get the applications through the Court of Protection as quickly and cheaply as possible. And that involves the judiciary, who rightly controls the Court of Protection, and I'm getting very good engagement from the judiciary. Uh, Baroness Wheatcroft. My Lord, some providers of child trust funds are allowing parents access to those funds with other proof, without going through the Mental Capacity Act procedures. Can the Noble Lord, the Minister, assure me and the House that those who do offer such expedited help to parents or carers will not be subject to any sanctions? My Lords, uh, I'm afraid I cannot give that assurance because sanctions are not a matter for the government. There are independent bodies in place. Uh, whether the independent providers, the industry providers, are complying or not complying with the protections under the Mental Capacity Act is not something on which I can give an opinion. Uh, I'm sure they've looked at that issue. The Mental Capacity Act is there, ultimately, to protect vulnerable people. Lord Bavesy of Didcot. I declare my uh, interest in the Register of Members' Interest working with the Investing and Savings Alliance. May I pay tribute to my noble friend Lord Young for his assiduousness on this issue and also pay tribute to the noble Lord Lord Wolfson for the way that he is gripping this issue. In the absence of a legislative solution, there has to be a practical one. The Government Digital Service has a mantra, what is the user need? Simpler forms, 
no fees, we can get a lot done without legislation. Uh, my, my Lords, uh, with respect, I agree. No fees are in my bailiwick. We've done that. Simpler forms are in the judiciary's bailiwick. I'm working with the judiciary to encourage them uh, to put simpler forms in place. Ultimately, my Lords, there is a constitutional position here. The courts are run by the, the judiciary in this regard, not by government ministers. And that is as how as it should be.